The long tail cast on, like virtually every knitting technique, can be executed in more than one way. A couple of weeks ago, I posted a video on what is often called the slingshot method or continental method of the long tail cast on. And I got several requests to demonstrate what is called the thumb method or English method of this cast on. So this week's Technique Tuesday is a response to that request. The long tail cast on, which you see on the needle, is a very common method of casting on stitches for a knitting project that will start at an edge like this hat or this sock, as opposed to a project that might start at the toe of a sock or start from a closed position. There are two strands that are used to execute this cast on. One strand, which is the long tail, forms the twisted loops of the edge that sit under the needle, while the other strand is the working yarn. It's the yarn that's connected to the ball. And that strand creates the loops that are on the needle. It takes some practice to gain the muscle memory for the cast on, like it does for any knitting technique. So we're going to practice with just a few stitches, and then I will put in a section of slow motion doing the cast on so that as you practice, it will be easier for you to follow along. So just for the sake of practice, we're going to measure off about 12 inches or 30 centimeters of yarn. I'm using a worsted weight yarn and I have a US size seven needle, which is a four and a half millimeter. So I'm going to just measure off, you know, 12 inches or so. So this strand right here is connected to the ball. I'm going to hold that in my hand with the needle. And on this side, I'm going to grasp the yarn just kind of lightly in my hand. And then I'll take my thumb and I'll swing it over the top like this so that I am creating a loop. And so for the first cast on stitch, we're just going to insert our needle through that loop. And you can see that it's just a twisted loop. And that will be our first stitch. The first stitch is different from all the other ones. If you prefer, you can use a slip knot. So the second cast on stitch and every stitch after that are going to be worked by inserting your needle through that thumb loop, but keeping your thumb in there for right now, grabbing the yarn, the working yarn, wrapping it around the needle so that you're going underneath to the left and then over the top. So if you were to look at the needle this way, that's going around counterclockwise. And then you wanna keep the yarn kind of held, held down a little bit at this angle while you pull your needle back through that thumb loop like this. And as you do that, you can then pull a little bit on the thumb loop to tighten the stitches up. You don't want them to be super tight. You want about as much space between the two stitches as the yarn is thick. Again, you're going to go into that thumb loop you're gonna bring the yarn around from underneath to the left and then over the top and back to the right. And again, I recommend holding the yarn kind of in a downward position while you pull that needle back through. And then as it comes through, you take your thumb out and you tighten up that loop a little bit. Now, the reason I'm saying to to keep this yarn down a little bit as you pull it through is because if you have your yarn tension around your fingers and you have it up like this, it can be a little bit harder sometimes to get that loop on the back to come down. So if you hold your finger down while you tighten it up a little bit, that will help and you can lift your finger back up again. Again, if you are used to tensioning the yarn through your, your fingers, you can go ahead and do that swing the yarn around the tip, bring your, your finger down as you pull that needle through so that as you're swinging around, it brings that working yarn down to the bottom and then swing your thumb like this. You should be able to move these first few stitches very easily along the needle. 
if you're tightening them too much, they aren't going to slide. And that's going to create a really rigid edge that's not going to stretch with the fabric. And it's going to be difficult to get your other needle, your second needle, actually through those stitches when you're trying to knit that first row. So just be mindful. And again, it takes some practice. So I'm going to show one more time and then we'll do the slow motion section. So you're going through, going to wrap your yarn around, hold your finger down as you come out and over, tighten it up, and then you can move on to the next one.
One of the things that I want to mention is that the length of tail that you need for your cast on is going to vary based on the number of stitches that you need and also how thick your yarn is and how large your needles are. So if I needed to cast on uh, 10 stitches with this yarn and this needle, I wouldn't need more than about uh, 12 or so inches of yarn. But if I wanted to cast on 10 stitches with this yarn, with the thicker needles, I'm going to need a longer tail than I would need with thinner yarn and thinner needles. And likewise, if I needed 110 stitches of this, I would need a much longer tail than I would need for just 10 stitches. There are a few good ways of estimating the length of tail that you're going to need, as well as how to cast on without having to do any estimation at all. And I will leave a video to that up here, as well as down below. Whether you are learning to knit or teaching someone else to knit, knowing that there's more than one way of executing a knitting technique can be really helpful if you or the person you're teaching is struggling with the process they're presented with first. Whether you hold both strands of yarn in your left hand, as is the case with the continental method of the long tail cast on, or hold one strand in each hand, as demonstrated today, the resulting cast on is structurally identical. Neither one is better or worse, but one might be better for you personally. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below. If you'd like to learn more about the versatility of the long tail cast on, you might like this playlist of videos over here. And if you missed the video on the continental method of the long tail cast on, that video is right down here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.